Yeah, welcome back. Right now we're going to discuss the 160 million Naira SUVs. Remember that the chairman of the Senate Committee on Services, Sunday Karimi, um, uh, has said that Assembly members deserve 160 million Naira watt SUVs while insisting it has to be supplied by foreign car brands. Okay, that's what he said. They need it uh, for the duties that they are about to perform. They need it because the Nigerian roads are bad and they need a foreign car manufacturer to supply that because they have a big name. And that big name also translates to, you know, uh, quality and durability. That, that, those were his arguments for the 160 million Naira SUVs. We have um, two guests that will be talking about that, how they feel about it. Um, I know a lot of people will be on different divides. Some will be saying they are, they are happy with it. Some will say they are not happy with it. But let's get the opinion of our two guests. We have Mr. Biodun Shoumi, a political affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Shoumi. Good morning. Yeah. We also have Mohammed Abdullahi, also a public affairs analyst. Mohammed, good morning and welcome to the program. No, good morning, Nigerians. Always my pleasure. Okay, uh, so let me start with Mr. Shoami. Uh, I was just before the show saying uh, maybe you are going to have your own SUV too. But what do you feel about this argument of the, uh, of the chairman of the Senate Committee on Services, Sunday Karimi? Uh, the reasons they are having the SUVs of 160 million naira each. Yes. In fact, when I went um, his position on it, I think um, the whole debate around the SUV did move from the sublime to the ridiculous. Um, in the first instance, when he says that the roads are bad, who is responsible for carrying out oversight functions? It's the National Assembly. So, how do they expect, if they fail in their duty, how do they expect the votes not to be bad? And why should the taxpayers be responsible for that? And that is just to pick it at the basic level. But fundamentally speaking, if you go back some years down to about 2005, 2006, you will recall that there was a monetization program carried out by the uh, former president of Asajo's administration, where the accommodation and travel cost, the cost of vehicles, due to the cost of maintaining them, we were told at that time, were monetized. And that led to selling off the um, accommodation called Apple Quarters to the legislators. And the cost of vehicles were monetized into what they call allowances, uh, which they are, uh, since then would be paying to lawmakers. So, therefore, what you see is for lawmakers to individually get another SUV is like double payment because the cost of the, their transportation for their official functions have been monetized already since 2006 when Obasanjo was bringing power. Uh, many people recall that. So therefore, what is the business of it? But you will notice that the lawmakers are also very careful. They are ending it on carrying out their oversight functions, not using it to go to the office. If that is the case, then why must every um, uh, parliamentarian, every member of the National Assembly have one vehicle? Why not a boss, you know, to, for executive, um, uh, for their own um, oversight functions to be able to move to um, any location? After all, they'll be going together. So why the need to again issue one SUV at a high cost to everybody? The third factor which we need to bear in mind is that due to policies of the federal government to reposition the economy, which is the issue of removal of work subsidy, it has multiplied, you know, it has multiplied effects on the entire economy in a way that nobody would deny the fact that Nigerians are living in excruciating pains and that uh, the pains of um, subsidy removal um, is being felt by anybody. 
Everyone is expected to tighten their belts. This is not the right time. In my view for the National Assembly, to now see in the midst of this excruciating pain, uh, the need to embark on um, acquiring uh, SUV at the cost of 160 million naira. And lastly, which is my fourth point, is if we need to do that, what about our domestic industries? Have we looked inwards? Why create jobs in other countries, you know, through the importation of this vehicle, rather than using locally assembled vehicles, which will also serve the same purpose? Uh, because the moment you import, for every single import, you are creating or sustaining jobs in other economy without creating jobs in our own uh, country. So, in essence, we are outsourcing our employment to other countries while creating unemployment at all. Mm. Okay, uh, well, let me hear what uh, Mohammed would have to say about this before, because all these things that you have mentioned, he had arguments for them. Mohammed, what, what do you feel in the first place about this 160 million naira? Let me put that to perspective, into perspective. If you're using 150 or 160 million naira to pay people who are earning 30,000 naira as minimum wage, you will pay 5,333.3 people uh, their minimum wage for a month. So 5,000 people's salaries is what is going into one car. And the argument is that they should use this to do their oversight function in their constituencies that have bad roads. What, what, what is your take? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I think Mr. Biodun has actually given a whole lot of background uh, analogy on the issue. But what I will add is the fact that, um, yes, perhaps um, legally, the the National Assembly members have right, you know, to acquire such vehicle, perhaps legally. I'm using the word perhaps because I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, but again, it's... Um, Let's look at it from the moral point of view this time around. And what do I mean? The country is going through a whole lot at the moment. The cost of living is skyrocketing. In fact, majority of Nigerians are falling under the poverty radar. And then, um, so I, I feel in this moment in time, uh, this moment in time is actually not the right time for the National Assembly members who, what I want to say is, whether they want to agree or not, are actually above the Nigerian middle class. They are part of Nigeria's upper class. If you are a senator or a House of Rep member in Nigeria, the majority of Nigerians will believe you are part of the upper class. So I think morally, if not even legally, it's not the right time to start talking about acquisition of uh, vehicles that the total worth is about 56.7 billion. Read my lips, sir, 56.7 billion naira at this moment. And the very shocking thing uh, that's happening, uh, the, the very shocking position that is even happening, aside the fact that they are going ahead with the acquisition, the more shocking thing is that they are not trying to plow back this money into Nigeria's economy. You know, they are taking this humongous sum and you know, dumping it into the already developed Japanese economy because they are talking about Toyota cars, you know, where we have local manufacturers, at least not one, not two, not three in Nigeria that should be able to meet that demand, even not immediately. If you give them time, I'm very sure, perhaps in four, five, or one year plus, Nigerian local manufacturers should be able to meet that demand. But they have, aside the fact that it is wrong, the timing is wrong, the most challenging thing for me is the fact that this money is, is being, you know, dumped in another economy, creating jobs in another economy where we have so many Nigerians, perhaps here, who might be losing their jobs or not even have uh, what to do at all. So, in fact, this is the moral bankruptcy that we talk about, you know, and it is shocking that people who are supposed to create laws, who are supposed to make laws, who are supposed to see these things clearly are giving very flimsy justifications about it. What stops the National Assembly, for instance, in promulgating, sorry, uh, the, the, the word promulgation is not right, in, in creating laws to say everything that is, you know, meant to be from the government should be locally sourced. 
It's, it's, it's very possible. Where it is possible, it's very, very, very possible. And it's shocking that it's the same set of individuals that are trying to dump 56.7 billion at this critical time, where everything, the cost of living is so skyrocketing. Uh, they're, they're trying to take out 56.7 billion out of the economy just to buy cars. Come on, it's, it's really shocking. So like I said, Mr. Biodon has given a whole lot of analogy, so I wouldn't like to repeat that. But my question is, even if this is legally right, what about the moral point of view at this point in time, where majority of Nigerians can't eat three times a day? Mm. Not to even talk of, uh, we don't want to talk about uh, paying school fees, paying house rent, and other necessities. Mm. Well, you know, we've so told, it's, we've been told to tighten our belts, and so the National Assembly is going to gulp the salaries of 18 million 900 people. Because I'm, when once we mentioned 56.7 billion, I was just making a calculation. How many people can be paid at 30,000 naira? And what is the cost that they are even talking about palliatives that will be given to people? How many people are going to be given these palliatives and all that? And then they're spending this much money. Let me go to Mr. Abiodun. Uh, both of you have mentioned the fact that they said that they are going to um, fund an economy that is not ours. One of the arguments that uh, the, this Senate committee chairman said uh, had was that, um, well, um, these people have a, a big name, and so they want to patronize them because uh, that big name also has quality. Whenever our own local manufacturers get that kind of a big name, uh, they will now begin to patronize them. <laughs> that was the argument that he had. I, I've, maybe I, I shouldn't say what I felt, but uh, uh, if you permit me, I felt insulted and, and really, really, really... Uh, disappointed in the fact that you are saying once they grow you are going to patronize them who will make them grow so these arguments he had I want you to uh, look at them and x-ray them one after the other if you may uh, he said these people have a big name so they are going there uh, they deserve this uh, uh, cast because they have to do oversight function which you you also said that they are supposed to be the one to take care of the roads that they are complaining about and all that so what do you think, even if, like uh, Mohammed said, it is legally right, even if, I don't know whether it is legally right, but even if it is legally, legally right, what do you think at this point can be done to, because a lot of Nigerians are saying they should be stopped, but nothing is being done by, to, to that effect. What do you think can be done? Should we let them go on? Should we stop them? How can we go about it? Um, 
there's something about uh, that which uh, we all need to worry about. So when it comes to personal benefits, uh, they seem to cooperate um, together. And the, the only disagreement is always on uh, who gets what political offices, you know, and that is very troubling. And our representative needs to listen to the people. Um, we can only articulate it and explain the feelings of the people and the pains in the land that this is not the right time to go about it. But I don't think it's what anybody can approach the courts to stop. Maybe a civil society um, mobilization, um, or maybe protest, maybe that would eat a call with them. I'm not sure um, that uh, that will yield the desired result. But it does not mean we should stop articulating it and putting pressure on members of the National Assembly, you know, to on this occasion do the right thing, assessing the idea, you know, and if they have to at all, they should buy the Nigerian goods. Well, it's 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 crazy because uh, these same people who are saying they need to go to their constituencies to. Um, to do their oversight functions according to the excuse he was given, also go to these same places during elections without these cars, and they are able to enter these places uh, without any problems. Then once election is over, the roads become bad, and uh, the oversight functions take a toll on them and all that. And then, Mohammed, uh, one of the arguments also was that even the ministers, why are people not looking at ministers and just taking care of, or just uh, concerned about what the um, National Assembly members are doing? The ministers have uh, four to five vehicles in their entourage. That was the, the argument also he brought up, that if the ministers can have this, why can't the National Assembly members have it as well? And so some people are... Uh, just to follow up the question that I asked Mr. Showomi, uh, some people are uh, saying that it is not right that the National Assembly will have this kind of powers to arrogate uh, or to, to allocate the kind of uh, monies they, they allocate to themselves. The constitution should be looked into. Do you also buy the idea that it's time to look at this constitution and, uh, you know, change a lot of things? Yes, it's, it's, it's very possible, but you look at um, who, I mean, the institution that will lead the charge in terms of the constitutional amendment is actually the National Assembly. So it's, it's, it's almost it's an exercise, in, you know, because you, you are asking people who are benefiting from the loopholes of the constitution to amend it, to change it, you know, uh, to, to give them, to, to stop them from benefiting. So it is almost an exercise in futility if you want the national, the same National Assembly to lead the charge to to change some of these things that the constitution uh you know allows them to do but having said that i think if i want to uh, you know co contribute to what mr biodun said earlier it's, it's so shocking and I, I keep saying it it tells our moral bankruptcy as a country that you have 109 senators over 360 house of rep member and not one not just one out of this whole lot feels no, I don't want to take this vehicle. I'm speaking to the press. I'm speaking back to my, I'm telling my constituency that no, this vehicle that is being, you know, about to, to be purchased, no, I am not part of it. Come on. Is that not shocking? More than 400 and something members, almost 500, not one person. I'm not even talking about political parties now, because for me, I, I see no difference in almost all of our political parties, to be very candid. But just one person to just change that narrative or one aid, even just one aid of one of the senators or one of the House of Representatives say, I've advised my, you know, my, my my principal to say, no, we shouldn't do this. And he is going ahead to do this. And because of this, I'm resigning. We are not seeing any. We are not seeing it's shocking. So it tells of the moral bankruptcy of almost the entire country, you know, and it's and and, and it's so bad, it's so terrible that um, you know, we we how do I put it? I'm even lost of words, uh, lost for words. So it's 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 I keep talking about the morality that they have legal backing that they are going ahead with this. And if you look at the minister, it's the same. The ministers, they might have a point as well. But we should also understand that two wrongs can never make a right. Mm. In fact, it is also their function as the National Assembly to checkmate the executive. So while the executives are buying perhaps probably two, three vehicles for the ministers, where were they? Why were they not shouting? Why were they not saying they, they, they were against it? 
you know, telling Nigerians that this is not right or this is not the right moment. Nigerians don't have the funds to fund this kind of lifestyle for its politicians, where major, the politicians are less than 2% of the 200 million plus population. You know, if you have this kind of largesse for the for the 2%, what then is meant for, for the more than 98% uh, ordinary Nigerians uh, that are on the street? What then is left? It's, it's, it's shocking. And, and, and um, I'm very angry at the moment that uh, you have... Uh, People who are already elites still trying to, you know, to, to, to you know, to, to make life so difficult for, for the ordinary Nigerians. So what's left for to carry out projects, hospitals, uh, build schools, and even the roads that they are talking about? What's left if 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 um, all these uh, monies are meant to just service their own luxuries? Mm. By the way, the ministers were not elected by us. So if in our constituency we elected you, we sent you there for an assignment, and your assignment is to represent us, cry when we need to cry, and laugh with us when we need to laugh. Take our problems to, uh, to the, na to the, to the um, national level, as it were. But now this is what they're doing, and they're saying that it's because of us that they're taking this money, because they have to come back to our constituencies that we don't even see them anyway. Because a lot of them have constituency offices. They never come to their constituency offices. Best they can do is uh, after a quarter, they come to their house and then expect everybody to come greet them, take some drinks, eat some food, and then their boys are empowered with mot motorcycles or one or two with cars, and that is it. Uh, that is my experience. I don't know what happens in the north. Maybe it, it, it happens better than it, it does in the south. But that's my experience. But right now, what we are facing, according to how both of you have spoken, is a moral bankruptcy. Where do we start to begin to, to, to cultivate this patriotism which is fast dying in our society? Because a patriotic Nigerian, like you said, Mohammed, at least one of them should stand up to say, no, I don't think this is good for our people at this time. So I am opting out. None of them has said that. So it speaks to the morality of the Nigerian populace, people that we select or elect to go and represent us and all that. Where do we start from to cultivate this patriotism, this moral uh, standing that people should have when they go into public offices. Because if we continue like this, we don't know what is going to happen in two, three, four other cycles of election that might come and what the laws could be and how it will affect the people. Let me begin with you, Mohammed, and then end with uh, Mr. Shomi. Yeah, I think it's simple. It's just simple that people need to be selfless. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. How do we teach selflessness? Uh, Yes, patriotism is all about being selfless, you know, not thinking about yourself, you know, thinking about the generality of the populace, for God's sake, you know. Um, and, 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 and the shocking thing, like you rightly analyze, is the fact that these people, they don't feel, they don't feel what the masses feel. So, you know, they don't feel it. Every other thing perhaps is, is paid for by the government, this cars that you're talking about, you know, the house that they live, the clothes that they wear, even to the food that they eat, and the people that cook the food is all paid for by taxpayers' money. So they don't feel anything that the ordinary Nigerian, ordinary, ordinary Nigerians are feeling. So, you know, but it, if, if we need to cultivate this uh, morality that we talk about, it means we need to be selfless. We need to listen. We need to go down to the, you know, to the root causes of so many issues. So that we put ourselves, you know, in that position and be able to feel it. But at the moment in time, these uh, elites are not. It's shocking. All of their children don't school in Nigeria. So how do you expect them to improve, to understand practically the level of the decay in terms of the educational sector and then try to improve it? How? It's just by lip service. You know, they don't go to Nigerian hospitals. Even for headache, they go to uh, European hospital or American hospital just for checkup and so on. So how? So that's why I said it behoves on the National Assembly to make sure that some of these laws are localized, but they are not doing it. To make sure that people particularly, if you, if I have my money as a private citizen, I can do whatever I want to do. Same thing with you. But it's, it's not right for elected and appointed government uh, people to think they can just do whatever they like. In, term, in, in being patriotic is that they need to patronize Nigerian goods. They need to buy made in Nigeria. They need to promote made in Nigeria. Hmm. Oh, 
well, I don't know. I don't know how we'll begin to teach that. Mr. Show me, do you have a solution? How do we begin to, to teach patriotism? Uh, to our citizens. Let's even forget about the politicians because the politicians come from the people uh, to become what they are. I know also that uh, people have to, uh, the, the citizens are to blame in so many cases because these same politicians are the ones that come home and we give them uh, chieftaincy titles instead of recalling them if they do wrong or they don't do well in the National Assembly and all that. But I'm concerned about the future of the children that we are having now. What kind of future will they have if uh, the people who should make relevant laws that should safeguard their future are behaving in this manner? Where do we start to teach this patriotism to Nigerian citizens? Mr. Shoumi. Yes, I, I called. Okay. Yes, what you see is it, it goes further than what we are talking about. If you look at the political system we are practicing today, which make it, makes it possible, you know, for lawmakers to do exactly what they are doing today, which has created the situation that you cannot reasonably expect those who are benefiting um, from a particular system to change it, you will realize that the issue is far deeper than that. It's one, there's a psychological angle to it, because many of the representatives and senators campaign and appeal for the people to vote for them with the intention to represent them. And quite rightly, many people talk, they will. But it goes further in the sense that you can only understand why they're doing what they're doing. If you go through a book, uh, which is called Pedagogy of the Oppressed, the major lesson I learned from Pedagogy of the Oppressed is that an oppressed person when liberated does not necessarily want the liberation of other oppressed people, but to win his own hegemony over them. So what we see is that those who we have elected, who came to us pleading, you know, that we have elected, are now wielding their hegemony over us, knowing that there's nothing we can do for the next four years. A system of government that creates such a situation that it is more profitable to be a legislator, to be a senator, than to invest in industries, you know, should seriously be discouraged. I think we really need to go back and rethink our system, um, particularly, we need to restructure our country politically in a way that we can have a parliamentary system of government. I cannot imagine in the United Kingdom that the United Kingdom government, as wealthy as UK is, will buy SUV for each member of parliament. It's unthinkable. They will never think about that. And why is it possible in a, a poor country like Nigeria, particularly in the tools of economic pain, that we think um, is the right way to go? We are spending more on our legislators, you know, than if you take it in percentage terms, than um, so many people, in fact, than a whole community. At times, when you look at the gross uh, GDP of a community, you'll be shocked and what they're planning to use to buy a vehicle for a senator or a member of a uh, mass of uh, representatives. It, it's almost equivalent to that in small communities, farming communities and all that. So a system that proves all this needs to be reviewed. We cannot reasonably expect the National Assembly under the present situation to do what was done in Senegal, which is a bicameral legislature, now you reduce to a camera legislature. That is very rare. In our own climate, yeah, that's probably a bit more difficult. So I think within um, the, our feelings and the feelings of disgust over what they intend to do, which we are not in a position to stop them, I think it should only be kingdom the hope for or, or the agitation for restructuring our country. Until we do that, I move away from the presidential system of government to parliamentary system of government. This kind of situation will continue to happen from time to time again. But in this situation cannot be um, found in America, for instance, that pre uh, practices presidential uh, system of government. So here, whether it is parliamentary or presidential system of government or whatever laws are made in Nigeria, it doesn't seem as if the laws are the problem. It seems as if the people who should implement them are the problem. 
I think I, I, I think I think that's my position as well. Yeah. I don't think it's actually the system that um, that's the problem. Even though we understand that yes, the presidential system is far more expensive than the parliamentary system as suggested by Mr. Biodu. Yeah. But I don't think it's actually the issue of uh, the system of government. It's actually the issue of uh, people in charge. Yeah. And uh, I've been very careful with my words, uh, because like I keep saying, it's very possible that, um, yes, even though a majority of um, the, 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 I mean, the, the services that the National Assembly enjoys has been monetized in the past, I mean, by former President Olusha Gombasanjo, yeah. but it's still very possible by, by, that by, by their laws, they are still entitled to such a largesse. I mean, the, these cars that, that they are willing to expend 56.7 billion, it's very possible. You know, so it's it's not about the system that we want. It's about um, perhaps even our own constitution, what it gives rights to. You know, and people that draft it. Remember, if I, if you allow me, to digress a bit. Remember, just two months or so ago, when this new administration came into power, the revenue mobilization and whatsoever that's in charge of public affairs. Uh, I mean, public uh, um, salary. The the uh, salaries. Thank you. You know actually try to, to to want to raise the salaries of, um, of 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 public appointees if not for the cries of nigerians and perhaps the presidency that said no this is actually not the right time which is which is which, which is actually true so this is but the laws allow the allow them to do to do such so i think the the, the thing is it's shocking that we have such laws we must find a way as a people to change these laws. But these laws, for it to be changed, needed the buy-in of the people that are enjoying this thing. So it's, it's, it's actually very difficult. It's very it's like someone who is enjoying so much and you want to take that thing out of their, 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 their own hands. So it's, 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 uh, we need the civil society, we need Nigerians to rise up, you know, to call for some of the change, to changes to some of our laws, and I don't think necessarily is the system of government that we run that that uh, that's that's the problem here. Okay, um, uh, you said you were digressing. It's it's still in line, but let's digress now officially. You know, uh, we're rounding off, and um, I'd like just like. Uh, your final words, both of you, to be on what is happening today. Today, the uh, Supreme Court will give a verdict or will, will pass judgment, whatever that may be. It can be in three ways, as we've been discussing before this segment of the program. It can be in favor of the president. It can be in favor of any of the opposition. And it can be that they will be ordered uh, to do a rerun. INEC will be ordered to do a rerun. Whatever it is, it can go anywhere. But uh, I'd like you to talk to Nigerians uh, because tensions are high. I'll start with you, Mohammed, to wrap it up. And then um, Abiodun Shomi also will wrap it up with his own statement. I think, I think in my opinion, I will, uh, I will plead for, uh, you know, a judgment that will favor Nigerians. Um, it's high time that we have judgment that will favor Nigerians. And I don't want to interpret what that means, but a judgment that will favor Nigerians, that will take Nigerians out of this dojo. You know, uh, so it, it's very simple. But at the same time, again, I, I want to plead with Nigerians that whatsoever the, 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 I mean, the decision of the Supreme Court is, we have a country to build. It's very germane and important because there are so many things going haywire and going wrong in this country. So whatsoever the decision of the Supreme Court, we should take it in good faith. We should allow peace to reign and then join hands together, whether the opposition, I'm not saying perhaps a government of national unity, no, but at least we need constructive criticism by the opposition, not propaganda. In order... Okay, uh, we lost the audio, uh, Mohammed. there. Uh, Mr. Shomi, if you can hear me, uh, I'd like also uh, what you would advise Nigerians on this day. Yes, um... <laughs> We are coming to the end of the whole um, legal challenge over the last uh, presidential election in the country. It can only be good for our country because we can't afford a protracted legal um, tussle uh, because it distracts those who are elected um, from being able to pursue their um, duties in the interest of Nigerians. In my view, I think we still need to look for a way of conducting elections and resolving all legal disputes 
uh, before people assume office. I know it's a bit complex and it's a bit tough because uh, there are also processes of course to be complied with which will make, make it more difficult. So we really need to rethink um, the way we are conducting our democracy. Whichever way the judgment goes, no one knows, but whichever way the government goes, it's important for Nigerians to move beyond uh, policies and politicians and we should begin to look at the system. For instance, one thing which many people seem to be clamoring for is the issue of um, electronic coalition of results, which is not provided for in the electoral act currently. So we may begin to talk to our um, the members of the National Assembly to say, look, this is what we want to see, so that they can now enshrine in, in law. Um, and if that is in law, I think will have no option but to comply rather than relying on the promises of an INEC chairman. But we should actually codify it in a way that INEC would you know, be able to do that. So the bottom line is whichever, um, whoever emerges uh, victorious today um, has a lot of um, responsibilities, has a lot of uh, work to do in terms of carrying other people along and um, placating the whole country. And I have no doubt that um, it's a challenge which this country is able to surmount and the leadership are able to do the necessary thing. At least we're all in agreement that we have a country to protect and preserve. Whatever the situation might be, let there be peace and let Nigeria move forward. We believe in Nigeria. It's going to get better and better no matter what uh, the situation here uh, right now is. I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, Mr. Biodun Shomi, political analyst, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. And Mr. Mohamed Abdullahi, also a public affairs analyst, thank you for being a part of our show this morning. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay, this is where we wrap it up on uh, The Breakfast today on Plus TV Africa. On behalf of the entire team, I say thank you for being there. My name is Nyam Guru Let's do it again tomorrow.